Morning! Uh, take two of the Thought Leaders Business Lab Live Edition. Today we're talking about how to show up as the most successful person in your business. Like what does that actually mean? How do you do it? And we're going to uh, be having an amazing featured guest. But before we bring him on, uh, actually let's see if we can, before we bring him on, uh, I'm your host Samantha Riley from samanthariley.global and the, I'm the creator of Black Diamond which is the advanced program for thought leaders and experts who want to double their income, double their freedom and double their impact. Also the founder of the Global Thought Leaders Network. If you're joining me, say hi, let me know that you're there, let me know where you're from, let's see if we can invite Mahia on camera. Oh, it looks like we might be having more like this time. And Mahia, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> we made it finally. We did, we did. It wasn't really that much of an issue, but uh, I hate it when technology doesn't work. And we all know that it, when it doesn't work, it's the, uh, the operator. So I don't know what I was doing wrong, but <laughs> so wonderful to have you here joining us today. Same here. Thank you for having me. Such a pleasure. Wow. Um, how many days do we have for this answer? Exactly. <laughs> I, I always love to throw people. Let's just just jump into the rabbit hole right from the beginning. <laughs> right, right. So it's, it's getting pretty deep, pretty quick, yeah? Yeah. Um, the, 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 way, the way I've seen and learned and in my own personal journey as well, having worked with hundreds of executives and business owners, it's um, showing up as your most successful version, unlike how the world defines it, that have you reached a certain position or status or celebrity following on Instagram or whatever that may be. The way I've defined it is how much are you in rapport with yourself? How much okay, mm. how okay are you with being in your own skin? You know, because um, we all have parts of us that we are kind of like not okay with. We always have a little bit of grudge and rumbling about those things, you know, be it your physical appearance or how you think about things or you not, for me, it's like not winning uh, my games at chess consistently, right? It's, it's one of those things that keeps coming up. And we as humans have this tendency to always find something to be upset about or not be happy with ourselves. Uh, being the most successful version is pretty much like, how can you be okay with all parts of yourself, even though they may not be functioning at the level of capability that you want them to be, right? And then when you are in that space of okayness about yourself with everything, that kind of starts um, making things happen and flow in the direction of where you want to go. So Beautiful. Much, yeah. So that's a short, succinct um, answer to your Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> I think you did that extremely well, which uh, most experts can do. They can make complex things seem quite simple. So thanks for that explanation. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I love, I've, I've made some notes here. I love that you say that our actions and our beliefs are something that a lot of us talk about to be that best version of ourselves. But you're going to go into today why it's, it goes deeper than that. But before we do, I'd love you to share a little bit about how you got to where you are today doing what you do. Because as thought leaders, we often have a lot of, or we always have some, a lot of experiences and things that happen in our world that, that get us to where we are. Sure, sure. Um, I'll give the short version. For me, it was pretty much a story of like a slumdog millionaire, but without the millionaire part of it. <laughs> so, uh, so I grew up in Mumbai and um, pretty much like my whole neighborhood was lots of slums. So I, we were like the only tall building in the middle of slums in every direction. So from my, the view that I always had were people, you know, um, queuing up for everything, including using toilets, which are public toilets out there and stuff like that. So... A big part of that brought me to the awareness that, oh, wow, I'm so grateful to be living in a household of only 14 people where I don't have to compete with wow. hundreds of other families in this case. I grew up in a big family. And a big part of that uh, just opened my eyes to how the world is out there, the reality of how people make do with whatever is available to them. And as, mm -hmm. as the human spirit within us, it just makes us so resourceful, even in the most um, the least resourceful of uh, resource places, right? 
so that was a big part of my upbringing. And then take two, suddenly in my life. Uh, so for me, the only ticket out of that environment was keep studying and keep being the top of your class and just keep moving along the way. And mm -hmm. somehow as that kept happening, mentors would keep showing up in my life and they would open the doors for me at every stage. Mm. And pretty much I ended up in the US on a full scholarship, um, started working with tech companies there, did a lot of, um, so my background is in telecommunications and um, IT. But all through that, there was a parallel path, which was around the spirituality, the human element, the behavioral part of it, why we do what we do, what is our purpose here? So there was these two parallel things. One was the analytical, the engineering side of things that kept running. And then there was the creative, spiritual, universal, cosmic part of it. And then trying to make sense in between that, wow, I'm this being who's universally free, and but I'm confined to this body, this time, space, here, now, and I'm supposed to do something here. So there were these mm. two extremes. And along the way, as I started doing that, ended up in Silicon Valley, um, started uh, working with a lot of tech companies, doing research work, and at the same time met some amazing uh, behavioral change and executive coaches who kind of triggered that passion inside of me as to how we human beings go about creating the life we do create. Mm. And unconsciously and not, not realizing that it is our design. By design, we have even created all the misfortunes, the illnesses, and all the wins and successes and everything along the way. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that was the journey that put me on the path of actually working with companies and um, coming from that world in Mumbai where you could only do so much of spirituality. At some point, you had to be practical about everything. That's the same notion that I had to bring in the world of business saying that, OK, look, business is about act at the end of it is the best game you can play to show what you are deeply about. Mm, and mm. how can we have like yourself? I mean, when we had our chat, it was great to see that somebody who works from that applied space, you know, that it's not just all woo-woo things, which has its time and place, and it's not just money and making profit, but there is an intermediate world where the fusion happens. Yeah, and I love that we had that conversation, and I'm really looking forward to diving in today, because we are these multi-dimensional beings, and we have these multi-dimensional life and business, and, you know, the whole lot has to come together, and it's not just that, it's our health, and it's our spirituality and it's our beliefs and it's our relationships and the whole lot needs to come together. So I know that this is going to be a great conversation. Now, you, you have um, a very different viewpoint, which uh, I'm going to let you explain, uh, but I'd love you to go into your systemic thinking. Can you explain sure. to us what, what that is? In the most simplest of forms, it's about realizing that the whole affects the parts in a massive way, right? It's like a conversation around global climate change. We are all worried and panicked because we know that when the whole, the climate itself changes, it's going to affect every living being on this planet. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to us as human beings operating in our daily world, we kind of identify only to the limit of ourselves. Very rarely do we think about that, hey, what are my actions being affected by? What is the external influence that is going on, right? Uh, there is a big conversation around culture and uh, influence and things like that in companies, right? Where they say, oh, the culture of this company is such and such that it's making employees less productive or we have the best culture in the world, the best places to work. Now, systemic thinking is pretty much about understanding the effect of, if you talk about A and B, it's not only about A and B, it's also about the word, the part and. It's about the interrelationship between the two. Right. I love so, that. And so when you look at a system, you can actually see and trace how information flows through that system. It's like a complex web of waterways, you know. And then when you are able to see that, oh, wow, the effect that this point in the system is having is not only because of whatever is going on with that person or individual. It's also because of cumulative effect of how everything is functioning and when we start investigating, why was it designed this way? You start going into the space of motivations and seeing if something was done in isolation without understanding the consequential impacts of it, how is it going to flow everywhere? Mm. So families are nothing but systems. 
human beings are nothing but part of bigger systems cultures are systems communities are systems nations are systems right and the world is a system and only when something huge happens that's when we start um referring to that this is a systemic issue and this should not have happened the biggest example of that was when the 2008 gfc the global financial crisis happened and every second um commentator out there said hey this is a systemic issue and it this culture is rampant in the lending industry pretty much right and the royal commission aspects we are going through currently in australia it's pretty much about understanding the systemic aspects of how banking practices are and the lending practices are so when i look at um, business owners i start looking at their systems basically saying that look they are an individual doing x y and z um what is the system they have come to they have come from and primarily the system it either ends up being the industry that they are in or the family system that they have come from so mm-hmm. what is it that is influencing their identity who are they showing up as and what are the causes of that and how is the entire system affecting the outcome at the end of the day mm. so a system is quite complex because there's so many moving parts how exactly. do we even know which part of the system to start with fantastic uh that's a great question i think we we generally we start with a very simple question we start with the question which is what would you like if you could wear a magic wand and have anything in your life what would you like and generally the person who is being asked this question picks up something that is either a tangible or intangible mm-hmm. so they might say look ideally i would like great profits in my business or i would like my team to be performing a lot better so I'm like, okay what we look at that point is there is a tiered system what we call i call it the full stack human experience that mm-hmm. we can go from the intangible but from the tangible all the way to the intangible so the lowest level we start looking at is the environment that mm-hmm. anything that is for example the place that you work the money that you earn the kind of people that you have around you um the car that you drive all those are environmental factors in your business or in your life and what we start asking the question then is pretty much from a systemic point of view is that hey what is affecting this to begin with and when we start looking at that the first next level up that comes about about the environment is our behaviors what are the behaviors we are doing that is affecting our environment every day at 11 a.m. i might be having coffee somewhere but here i am having an amazingly different experience on this call today so my behavior of doing something different is changing my environment massively. Mhm. Mhm. However, it's not sustainable all the time because like going to a different coffee shop all the time or having so the theory is that to change a lower level as Einstein said to change the level of what you are experiencing you need to change the level above from which it you know from which it influences it. Sure. Sure. So so we start asking the next question then what is it that's affecting this person's behaviors where is it all stemming from and the answer ends up being capability mhm when we endow someone with capabilities they're going to start behaving with those capabilities showing up and those behaviors will automatically lead them to a different environment like for example if you when if you if you were to teach someone sales processes that's a capability that you are in teaching someone it's mm-hmm. very likely that the behavior that they will be using that sales process in a conversation somewhere and as a result of it their environment might be that they might decide to start their own telemarketing company or they might be doing better sales in their business which causes greater revenue to come through mm-hmm. um there is a strong correlation between people who learn a foreign language and them visiting that country of that language so, wow right it's like it's yeah. pretty straight forward so every like a lot of people they learn french or italian or mandarin and they say oh okay why are you learning it oh next year i plan to visit china of, or italy of course france. right makes sense yeah yeah so it's like capability starts to affect your behavior that you are going to speak french you learning yes. to speak french is the capability you speaking french is the behavior and you finding yourself in the environment that supports that is the outcome So that's how the chain kind of builds up along the way pretty straight forward. And Perfect. the beautiful part is that it also goes the other way that it also goes from the environment upward. So if you are put in an environment 
sedated and thrown into France, pretty much you will be exposed to French and all the time and you will, as a result of it, start to speak up French and over time you will learn to speak French. So it also affects the upward way of doing it, right? Yes. So, and this is when things become a bit intangible because we are, then we ask the same question, what is it that's affecting our capability? And generally the answer comes back is that there is a belief about something. A right? lot of female executives that I work with um, in corporates, there was this belief that we are in a glass ceiling here. That mm -hmm. I can't go. Yeah, that I don't. I had this nasty belief that when I came to Australia 10, 11 years ago, I was like, oh, I'm an outsider, outsider here. I don't think I'll be accepted here. Mm. And that, in a way, is a downward spiral started affecting all the kind of conversations I was having, the kind of people I was hanging out with, and it just was not a good space to be in. I'm like, oh, my belief is actually eroding my capability. It's, it's also making me incapable, and it's allowing me to be in that shell. And at the same time, I'm like, oh, we are all humans here, and everybody wants to learn something that I have to offer, and that's the capability, uh, that's the belief I acquired along the way. And the moment that happened, things shifted massively. So our belief system kind of starts to dictate what capabilities we will or won't take up in our life. And it's, it's quite amazing to see how much our belief can affect our life. Of you course. know, people that have got an amazing belief, it, it's really, you know, quite eye-opening how far and how much further or, or what they can achieve compared to someone with exactly the same capabilities uh, you know, I call them talents or we could call them genius zone or whatever it is, just by having those, you know, those, those glasses on of, you know, we're not good enough. It's, it's quite incredible. Yeah, massively. And beliefs are like absolutely insidious, you know, sneaky buggers. They just get in and they, you don't even realize that they are just there. And it, yeah. it, it, forms the, it forms the map of our world, of how we are essentially. Yes. And as we continue to explore that, we start actually going to the next level, which is what is it that causes us to acquire our belief? And this is where it all comes back to your identity. Uh -huh. Who you believe you are. Identity is nothing but an, like a, a superset of your belief systems, essentially. So anything that has an I am followed by fill in the blanks, whatever that may be for you. I am a woman, I'm an immigrant, I'm the Pope, I am X, Y, Z, whatever that may be for you, that identity will force you to take up a very clear stance in the world. Even though when I, it's, it's, a, it's an internal construct that we say. And that is why many times I showed up that way in this place. So there is, this is the part where the earlier thing I mentioned about being in rapport with all parts of yourself, this is where it starts to really show up. That who so I've got you? a quick... Yeah. Sorry, there's a bit of a delay there. I didn't mean to cut you off. So I've got a question about identity. You, you said that there's the, you know, the I am. Are we able to change that even if we've got a belief? So let's say someone's got a belief that um, they can't get 10 clients this week. Can they then say, you know, I am successful and can get 10 clients this week? Is the identity able to be changed without the belief or not? It's, it's like this, right? It, uh, think of, think of, about, about this as climate change again. The temperature has changed in Melbourne. It's getting cooler. So everybody is automatically doing what is needed to support that change. Yes. The question is that what change needs to happen or who do you need to be to um, have the outcome that you are after, right? Uh, yes. If, if you see the movie uh, Inception, have you seen it? So with that movie essentially? I haven't, no. Okay. So in, basically it's a brilliant, brilliant movie which talks about this concept of going deep enough where you can change the person's identity and relationship and the context about themselves that they uh -huh. will bubble up as a different person completely. Yes. Or um, there was this brilliant movie called um, War Dogs. And in that Bradley Cooper is like an international arms dealer. And one of the best scenes of that movie is that he ends up beating up one of the characters in the movie and eventually later on uh, finds him and says, look, I apologize for what happened. Uh, I'm not a bad person, but 
sometimes when i'm put in certain situations i have to ask myself what would a bad man do and then i end up doing that it's like that is the identity thing that we take on mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. here's where we need to start acknowledging about ourselves this is where the whole spiritual angle starts to come in we are just taking on a shell of who we are it's like a character yeah. playing itself out right so when we ask ourselves who do i need to be you are actually distancing yourself from the fact that you are an infinite being with immense self worth there is nothing that will ever take away that from you you are just playing the mm. shell of whatever belief identity structure that's running in your system mm. so that is changeable massively you can always change your identity but it will come with its automatic downloadable set of beliefs that go with it sure right um so then the question again becomes where does our identity come from and this is when we start talking about the layer of systemic work this is where we say it actually comes from many different systems that are influencing our identity the primal the most important one is the family system mhm that in the family there are so many different dynamics that are running and there is an energetic um uh, field that has been created even before you are born even before you are born the notions of poverty health relationships love fortune all of that kind of has its own flavor that's sitting in your system it's like a glass of water that has been muddled up with everything that has happened in the last 10 generations or more right so there's this big um research around epigenetics as to how all the lifestyle that our ancestors went through how that has affected the genes and the conditions under which they have lived actually have been passed on to the uh to yeah. the descendants of that right so that is how our identity kind of gets locked in to our family system and then the question becomes can i still have a separate better life even though my family or people upstream did not have access to the same benefits so often times i see so often when i'm working with people and families and i we work on this process called constellations family constellations where we start actually energetically seeing things we see that how something so uh um, insignificant in something upstream can affect massively downstream it's like a snowball effect that it has there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the saying that we have is in a family of thieves the one who doesn't steal feels guilty so <laughs> wow i've never right? heard that that's amazing and it's straight it's so away like, yeah it is profound yeah, it blew my mind when i first heard it and i was like wow it's because we as human beings always have this deep need to belong yes we will do everything in our power to belong to our family of origin mm-hmm. unconsciously mm-hmm. even though on the external side of it we may hate them we may never speak with them but deep down it's like there is just this bond that keeps running and you keep sourcing a part of their suffering thinking that by you suffering enough you will free them of their suffering eventually right? well i mean let's face it right back in the day like millions of years ago we needed that family for safety and security you know we we were right. in packs it's it is different now but we still have these uh ways of thinking that are in us as human beings so you know leaving those family systems behind is is unsafe that that's right. the feelings that comes up right and it, it is unsafe because psychologically for the child that was born at that moment it forms the bond with with the family itself there is no other way for it to not belong it has to belong otherwise it will not survive it's pretty straightforward even though physically you may live far away and not be in touch with that right but psychologically in your this is where when we start looking at systemic stuff in families etc this is the blueprint on which your foundation of your identity is built mhm mhm and that is the unconscious thing that keeps affecting it right so we can say on this whiteboard i could be drawing million things but the systemic side of thing is that how is the whiteboard itself presented to you is the canvas itself and that is something that people don't realize that oh wow i can i can try to be as different of a person but unless i change the canvas on which this was painted it's not going to have a different effect yeah so that's where a lot of that family system side of thing comes in and then mm-hmm. i've taken this further in the sense of combining that we end up choosing a certain family system based on our spiritual needs of being mm. who we are 
whatever deepest lessons we need to learn it's not a happenstance yeah. an accident that you just were born into a random family mm-hmm, a part mm-hmm. of your consciousness your spirit or whatever higher self you call it had to go through that and then we ask the question what is your highest level version of you that is the most successful version of you it is the highest spiritual aspect of you that can be in okayness in rapport with the flow of life with the flow of divine or whatever you say and then bring that into all the lower layers of this existence so this is mm. how we can start taking the intangible and bring it down a little bit more into the family systems from the family to the identity and the identity to beliefs beliefs to capability capability to behaviors and behaviors into your environment wow that's so amazing just to hear it explained that simply it all makes perfect perfect sense so to help us understand how to, how this integrates can you share a case study and and you don't need to share names or anything but just a maybe a time that you worked with someone maybe that needed more um i don't know pick, pick something like to grow their business like they needed more sales and can you help us understand what needed to happen going through all those layers and what ended up happening what was the outcome of that sure sure um essentially there's this very famous um person who I mean, I can't name names but when she came to me she was uh, really 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 struggling with her business as such mm-hmm. and her husband had basically squandered all the family business that they had and effectively she was at that point where she had to step in and said i'm taking control of this whole situation mm-hmm. you step aside and i'm going to wear the pants from here on out and drive the whole thing and when we, when i met her there was so much frustration anger sadness and all the betrayal mm. experience happening right and i said okay let's just start with first and foremost asking you the simplest question what would you like and she said i would like for my business to have x number of sales by this time otherwise we're going to end up being bankrupt and we're going to lose everything so mm-hmm. it was a very dire situation at that point i said okay and then at that point so there was a an, a very clearly defined outcome that i would like to have x number of things i said okay all right great what is the behavior that you need to show as a result of this uh, to be able to achieve this and that's when we started introducing few different behavioral choices we said okay let's actually introduce you doing the events you doing webinars you doing speaking engagements you promoting your facebook groups and you doing sales calls with certain kpis that we want to reach x number of kpis every mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and then when i along the way so those behaviors are pretty clear so i'm like oh she's like okay yeah i can do this but i don't know how to do x y and z moment i heard that it was a capability level question mm-hmm. i don't know how to do x i don't know how to do a sales process properly so when i sat in with her on on seeing how she was really selling it was very clunky and just not really building the rapport and the trust that people would want to buy from her Mhm and then mm-hmm. I started coaching her on actually teaching her the dynamics of how to sell well how to build rapport how to actually close the sale at the end of it and doing that itself she was like okay great this is awesome but then what started to show up was that there was this sinister belief because every time she would go on the sales call the people wouldn't show up sometimes they would just you know bail out at the last minute or they would uh, not sign up after having agreed to have signed up they would not pay the money the other things would start to break inside the inside their house the roof would start to collapse things that like really out of the blue yeah. sickness illness etc this is when it became very clear that her ecosystem was designed only to handle a certain level of success mhm and mm-hmm. the moment she started going beyond that success it was like a rubber band that was stretched too much that the other end started to snap back pretty quickly right so i said yeah. all right let's investigate and see what's running under the hood here what are the beliefs that are running and pretty much she said straight away that when i was growing up overseas my father said you will never ever amount to anything right and basically he said something very 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 rude to her saying that to make a living you will have to do x y and z almost like you will have to sell your yep. body every day yeah it was the most humiliating thing that you could ever hear and that 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 deep part of her psyche that was that had entrusted that relationship to a father that had almost made an agreement oh whatever you say is the truth i will do it that way and then the human part of her life like oh my god wtf 
you know, what's going on here? How am I going to survive and make this happen? So those were at conflict at that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is when we have to kind of start intervening at that identity and family systems level. Saying that, how can you have an experience of life that is so uniquely yours and different, even though someone upstream is so bitter about your success? Mm -hmm. And that was the biggest piece of work. And moment that tiny piece was really, but most crucial piece was changed. Within three, within six months, they ended up creating almost like a seven figure business through that. Wow. So wow. It was pretty full on. But the whole point is that when systemic changes kick in, it's super fast. Right. It's like the dinosaurs got wiped out pretty quickly because the system changed so rapidly. So mm. the same thing happens that we think of it time as linear process. But in this case, working with systems is information. The moment you change one bit of information, the whole configuration changes instantly. Yeah, it makes so perfect sense. Yeah. And then we, so it's essentially the, so the, all the inner stuff was really sorted. The energy of that was there. What needed was an expression through the proper channels. So sometimes people don't have the energy itself inside to be able to achieve the outcomes. Or they might be great at sales. They might be great at capabilities. But if the, it's like a pen without any ink in it. Right. So we had to balance both of those things. It reminds me of those, um, word puzzles where you have to start off with one word and you have to get to another word and you're just changing one letter at a time to get from exactly. that word down. And, and as you were saying that, that's almost what it was like, okay, we're just going to change this one thing, this one letter, this one letter, and you start off here, but the word at the end is completely different. And that's what it came across to me that you're creating something different just by changing one little piece at a time. Right. And for me, the proof was that whether this internal change, and this is where the applied part of it comes in that I really feel happy about is, are we just changing for the sake of making you feel motivated? Or is it really going to show up in your life as a tangible result? Yes. Right. And that's why a big part of this process, I don't believe in the rah, 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 you know, motivational style of going to seminars and just jumping and emotionally going high on that. Or doing things, because that part of you that has created that sabotage for pattern requires safety to unpack itself. Mm, mm, and it's a yeah. very private, personal space with that we kind of start getting into to unpack the whole equation. So nothing, it's like um, something, just tiny drop of ink drops into a glass of water. And eventually after a time, the whole water has turned into that color blue of that ink drop. It doesn't have to be like a forceful breakthrough, smash through kind of thing. It is, this is where we say we want to respect the fact that this human being has created this as a, as a way of belonging to something much bigger than themselves. And to destroy that belonging is not the right way of doing it. It's actually about respecting all parts of them, including the parts that they are themselves at odds with. Oh, I love that. And it feels so lovely. Um, I've never been a, a lover of those smash through the uh, the barriers kind of person. I don't particularly like going to those seminars. Um, I remember one that I went to. All I, I, There was three days of everyone around me crying. And I actually, interestingly enough, journaled about it afterwards because it was such a different experience and noticed that the depression that those people went into, so it was a lot of friends of mine, the depression that they went into, that was not helpful whatsoever to just yeah. be completely pulling apart their their understanding of what their reality was. True, true. And it's like change, it needs to be, you don't think of it this way, right? It's like a, uh, when you have, when you make, if it's a, like a pizza pie, right? At the center, when you make tiny change there, it's going to flow out at a, in a much bigger thing at the outer level. So it's the same thing. It's like if you hit somewhere straight and then you change one degree, by the time you hit go far out, the angle has moved so far out that the distance is quite wide. So when we talk about outcome, outer versus internal, all we are doing is a tiny one degree change inside. And that mm. shows up massively different in the outer world. So internally, they could be sitting and like, huh, I don't know what happened, but it was a good session. Yeah, but I don't know, something's happened. And then a few weeks later, I check in there and say, how is everything? Yeah, that thing. Oh, yeah, that thing. Yeah, it just went through and everything went fine. Because for their system, we don't want that rubber band to snap back. We want that rubber band yes. to feel that any change that we do, that is going to survive. And it needs to feel 
as if they have done it themselves naturally and it was meant to happen that of feeling and that's the most difficult part of the work we do is because it's like at one level you want to show that hey the change that we did it was because of this and at the second level you want to make sure that they are experiencing change as natural as possible yeah so just to touch back that full stack human system is starting with the environment then coming up to the level of behaviors then into capabilities moving up into beliefs then into identity and then into systems family systems and then up into spirituality yes yep beautiful no i believe that you have a free gift for anyone who is watching this or maybe listening in yeah absolutely um we have this amazing community of people it's called the pathfinders and there's a facebook group called the pathfinders for uh, trailblazers innovators and entrepreneurs so um as the name suggests it is for people who are a lot more than just business or a lot more than just you know a personal development it is about people who have gone through life and whatever be the occasion they have risen to that and they have found a path in moving forward in their whatever be their desired level of success so the free gift is that please come and join me in that uh, facebook group and um, we have amazing conversations that happen in there and feel free to join in contribute share and base, most importantly like get all the help you need to be able to find your next level of success beautiful i love it mahir thakur thank you so much for joining me here today it's been a great conversation i absolutely love the way that you pulled everything together it's um my logical side and my woo woo side thank you because it's nice to hear another person that is able to integrate those two together because i find that that people will sit on either side so it's lovely to have that that conversation and that understanding that it's such a holistic we're holistic beings and that we need to pay attention to all of these different things so thank you so much such a pleasure having me on this call and thank you again beautiful uh thank you and if you're watching the recording or if you've joined us live thank you for joining us today on the business uh the thought leaders business lab live edition We're here every Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Or if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, please subscribe wherever that button is, wherever it is. Hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Thank you again, Mahir, uh, for joining us here in the Thought Leaders Business Lab. Thanks, pleasure.